face tough shooting conditions, Aurora HDR offers some pre-processing steps to further clean up your images. Let's tackle the first problem, which is aligning images if you happen to be shooting from a handheld situation or a moving platform. With Aurora HDR launched, just click the Open Image button and navigate to the files that you want to use. In this case, I have a 7 series bracket. And in this situation, I was shooting handheld. I would pressed the camera up against a surface to try to stabilize it, but this was a handheld shooting situation. And on this longer exposure that let in a lot of light, it was a really slow shutter drag. So it was important to try to keep a stable platform. With those images selected, I'll click Open. Now Aurora reads those all in, and if you don't want one of these images, you can click to close it. For example, this 5-stop overexposed might be a little bit soft, so if I see that it doesn't work out, I can rerun it and close it or remove it from the merge. But I think it's probably okay. In this case, if you look at it, we essentially have 12 stops of dynamic range, from 7 stops underexposed to 5 stops overexposed. Plus, since these are RAW files, it's actually going to push them a little bit further, giving us almost 14 stops of dynamic range. I'll choose the Auto Alignment option here because we were shooting from a handheld situation. And from the Settings icon here, I'm going to make sure to do the Color Denoise option. Now, I'll click Create HDR. Aurora goes to work and opens up all of those images in the background and starts to merge them. Shooting from a tripod has gotten more and more challenging, whether it's hassles from a security guard or just restrictions on how much baggage you could bring with you on an airline. It's more and more common that you don't have one. Fortunately, Aurora HDR makes it easy with the auto align option. In this case, the resulting image is amazing. I can see properly exposed every single thing in this scene, from the darkest shadows in the back to the brightest highlights. I love the natural results we've gotten right from the image here without doing any processing whatsoever. Now, to finalize this, I could just save it, but let's do a couple quick things. Using Smart Tone, I'm going to just set this image just a hair darker. I'd like it a little bit moodier. And I'm going to turn on Clipping Indicators here, and I see that we have just a little bit of blacks clipping. That's okay. I'm going to push that a little further. and play with the shadow controls here. That looks good. Now, let's just adjust the color temperature. I'm going to cool that down ever so slightly. And I like that. Feels right. And from HDR Enhance, let's put a small amount of clarity in and a little bit of smart structure. There we go. Now, things look good. Let's just click on the histogram there. Looks like a good base exposure. I'm satisfied with that. And let's just use the polarizing filter here to cut down on some of the glare. You see a little bit outside that window there. So I'm going to tone that down a little. Looks great. And let's put a slight vignette on the image. Just a little bit of darkening at the edge. I like that. And up here, we have a little bit of a highlight, might have been an out of focus area or just a reflection. So using Dodge and Burn, I'm going to click Start Painting, choose Darken, and get a smaller brush. And I could just brush over that area, like so. Looks good. Let's back that off just a little and click Done. And that tones that down nicely. Or I can crop that or heal it out, but all in all, I'm very satisfied. Let's just finesse the image. We'll do a slight crop from the bottom here. There we go. And just a little bit from the top. I'm going to uncheck the aspect ratio for a free crop so I can adjust the sides. Looks good. Click Done. And the new image is generated. If we look at the original photo, this was one exposure, the mid exposure. And the new image, it's absolutely amazing how much detail has been unlocked by the HDR process. Remember, this is a very fantastical scene here. So while it looks like highly stylized HDR, it really isn't. 
But if I want to tone that down, I can just back off the smart structure and even pull the microstructure to a negative amount for some smoothing. Now, we don't have any of that richly textured look that's often part of HDR, but what we do have is perfect exposure from the very front to the very back of the scene.